Okay, welcome back, Science Tens, to our next lesson in Chapter 2 of Chemistry. This is 2.3, and we're looking at balancing equations. So in the last lesson, we said that during a chemical reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. Matter has to be conserved. But you might have noticed that in this equation, we talked about how there's C, H's, and O's on the left and the right, and that stays the same. But you might have noticed that the number of them decreases significantly. We had 25 over here and only one carbon over there. And you might have thought, what happened to all those carbons? Doesn't the same amount on one side have to be the same as the other? Yes. Yes, they do. So today we're going to be looking at fixing that, which is called balancing the equation. So the candle molecule there, the paraffin wax, was a really big molecule. We're going to look at something smaller, uh, the gas you use to cook burgers on a barbecue, which is propane. So propane is C3H8 gas. And when you burn it, it reacts with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O. So there's a little smaller numbers here, so it might be a little bit easier to work with. But in this example as well, you see that we have three carbons off the start, only one at the end. We have eight hydrogens at the start and only two at the end. So we can see this is not balanced. So we're going to show you how to fix this. What we have to do is we have to add multiple amounts of each of these chemicals. And we're going to indicate that with a number before the chemicals. Maybe there's like two propanes or four propanes and maybe 10 oxygens. But we'll determine those numbers right here. And to help visualize it, I put some like really simple diagrams of what's going to represent these chemicals. So the c 3 h H8, I put uh, three blue circles to represent carbons, and then I put eight red um, squares to represent hydrogen. For oxygen, I represented this with some uh, green triangles, and they're bonded together since there's two oxygens there. And then they form CO2, so I have one of those uh, carbons with two of those oxygens, and hydrogen with one of those uh, oxygens and two of the hydrogens. So from drawing this, we can see clearly that there is not the same amount of shapes on the left as there is the right. But to keep it straight, I'm going to put a big line down the center, say everything on the left has to equal everything on the right. Now, where I'm going to start is with the carbons right here and make sure that those blue circles or the carbons are equal. We see that there's three on the left and there's only one so far on the right. Now, I can't just put two more um, carbons on there. I can't make it C3O2. That's not the same chemical. We do get carbon dioxide as a product, so we need to keep that ratio of CO2 the same. I can't change those numbers. But what I can change is I can make more CO2s. So I'm going to make another one there and another one there. So now I have three carbons on this side and I have three carbons on this side. Now you're probably thinking that's way too many oxygens. That doesn't make it balanced out. We will get to those in a second. Right now we're just going to work from left to right, starting with carbons. Next, we'll go to hydrogens. And on the left, I see eight hydrogens. So to make there to be eight on the right, again, I can't make it H8O. That's not water. It has to stay H2O, but I can add more water. So I'm going to add three more of those so that I have eight hydrogens over there. So eight on the left right here. And now I have eight on the right there. But again, we have way too many oxygens. And now we're going to solve that. So I need to look at all the oxygens over here. And that looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten oxygens over there, so I need ten on this side. They come in groups of two, so I need five groups of two. And at this point, we are completely balanced. And that's a more accurate representation of what the chemical reaction is going to look like, because you need the same amount of those atoms on the left as the same amount on the right. We don't get rid or make any new ones. They need to be the same. How we're going to indicate this, because you don't need to do a drawing for every question, is you just put numbers in front like I showed at the beginning there. So we only have one of these C3H8. We don't have to put one. We're actually just going to leave that blank because there's only one of those. There is one, two, three, four, five O2 molecules. So I put a five in front. There's one, two, three CO2s. So I put a three. And then there is one, two, three, four H2Os, so I put a four, and everything is balanced. Without drawing the diagram, you can just check that there's five O2s, so that's like five times two in the subscript, which means there's 10. And then I can look on the other side and say that there's three groups of two here, since there's a two subscript. So three CO2s has six oxygens and four H2Os. There's only one O there, so there's four here. So I have four and six is the same as 10. And you can check all the atoms that way. So now I'd like you to pause the video and take a try at these ones and then check back in and see if you got the right answers.
Okay, so let's take a look. The first one is one, three, and two. There are two nitrogens, there are two nitrogens, there is six, three times two hydrogens, and two times three, six hydrogens over there. The next one we see two KCl, two KCl. We have two times three is six oxygens, and three times two is six oxygens. So that one's balanced. Next one we look at two NAs, two NAs, two CLs, two CLs, two Fs and two Fs. Looking over the last two, we have two times two is four AGs over here. So I put four AGs over there. I have two oxygens and I have two oxygens. And then for the last one, I had S8, which is a big number. So I had to put eight in front here to make eight S's over there. Eight times three though is 24 oxygens over here. So to get 24, I needed 12 groups of two to get 24 on that side as well. Now, one thing that can make this a bit more complicated is if you have polyatomic uh, ions here. So for example, SO4 or sulfate. So if you're trying to balance the amount of S's and the amount of O's, they can start to get pretty complicated because as you see, there's O just by itself here. So trying to count the O's here and include the O's there and keep track of the O's in all of those positions is going to be a little bit complicated. So whenever possible, if you see that ion of SO4, it's likely that that's going to stay as a group. And we look on the other side, we do see SO4. So instead of keeping track of the S's and the O's separately, keep track of the SO4s. So I'm going to track where the AU's go, the SO4s as a group, MG's and the O's. And I can see on this side, AU, O, MG, SO4. And it makes it a lot easier than tracking the S and the O independently. So let's do this example. We have two AU's over here. We already have two AU's over there. So we're looking good. There's three SO4s over here and there's only one over here. People sometimes see that four and think there's four. Remember, that's a group of SO4 and there's only one of those. Over here, there's three groups of SO4. So to make that balance, I need to put a three in front there. So my AUs are good, my SO4s are good. Next, I go to my MGs. There's only one so far here, but there is three over there. So I'm gonna put a three. And then last, I need to check the O's. There's three O's and there is three O's. So it's looking like we're good. So the one polyatomic that can be hard to track is the sneaky hydroxide. And this is because when it bonds to hydrogen, we don't write it as hydrogen with an hydroxide, we write it as water. So you can kind of see here, we have Ca is going to bond with NO2 to make CaNO2. What we have left over is OH minus and H plus. When those come together, instead of writing HOH, we just write it as H2O because there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. That often gives people trouble how to track where the hydroxides and the hydrogens went. So I actually like to write it like that and then it makes it a little bit easier to balance. So let's give that a try. We have one CA, we have one CA, that's good. We have two hydroxides over here. And here, because that's just H with an OH, there's only one hydroxide right there so far. Even though you think, well, there's H2 over here, like H2, and that's matching H2 over there. Remember, that's an H plus with an OH. So think of that there's one hydroxide over here, I think makes it easier. So how we're gonna fix that is we need to put a two in front like that. I'll scratch this part out. We just have the two in front. So our hydroxides are two, our calciums are one, we're doing good. Next, we look over here at the H's, there's one over there, but because I put this two, there's two H's over there. So I need a two in front. So we have two H plus on each side. Lastly, I have two now, NO2, and over here we have two NO2, so we should be finished right there. It's a little messy, so I'll rewrite it as we leave that blank, because there's just one, two, goes right there, it stays blank, and we have a two right there. And that's all we have for this lesson. Try the practice questions, ask your questions in the live time, and I will see you in the next video.